Hey guys, it's Anya and today I'm here to give you some book recommendations based off of particularly strong writing styles. Writing style is something I find so important when reading, like considering an author can really, really suck you into the story with just the right tone. The recommendations I have here go beyond as well just what I consider to be good writing. It's where the writing style is a particularly strong aspect of the book. Going so far as to make it feel like a separate, tangible part of the story is whether you want that poetic style ready to draw you in with highly metaphorical language or something really humorous or even sometimes something really detached just to match the tone of the story. It's one of my favourite things to come across when I'm reading just to feel like you're reading a book that knows exactly what it is and an author that had their entire heart in it. That's not to say that books that aren't like this are any worse. In fact, a lot of my favourites just aren't books that stick out so much in this department, but I think it's really worth talking about anyway as a separate recommendation video. The first book I'm going to talk about is also the one that probably stuck out to me the most as soon as I thought about this, and that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. In this story we follow Laszlo Strange, who works as a librarian and is obsessed with the mythical city of Weep. We follow his story as he begins to discover this city and its secrets, and comes into a further understanding of his own being and his own history. What makes this book so fantastic is how poetic Lainey Taylor's writing is. The entire thing honestly feels like a poem written in prose form with such vivid imagery. This is one of those books where I just had to stop and pause to reflect on every other line of it that I read thinking I can't get over just how beautifully these words are constructed. I do have a book in which I write down a lot of my favourite quotes or even just passages that really stick out to me and honestly like half of this book made it in there. It is a super super flowery read so if you're not into that it may not be the strongest choice for you but if you like me just love words and the indulgence of language then this is a story so worth picking up. In a similar vein I also absolutely have to talk about the book I am currently reading and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. In this we follow Addie who in the very late 17th century essentially makes a deal with the devil to live forever and in exchange be immediately forgotten by everyone she meets. Then 300 years later, in modern times, she meets a boy who actually remembers who she is. This story feels a little less flowery than Strange the Dreamer, but still has that incredible enveloping quality where the storytelling feels like a character in itself, encompassing that feel of old gods and deals being made with dire consequences to come. There's just also a really fantastic feel of place. We of course have a 300 year old protagonist who's lived in so many different places across so many different times and V. Schwab just really generates a wonderful sense of every single one of them. The book the entire time has this feeling of hope and sadness simultaneously and it's the narration in particular that really gets that across. As I said I am currently reading this book and I cannot express enough just how beautiful it really is and I would say it's the writing style that truly makes it shine. Then going in a slightly different direction, we have Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carragher. I would in fact recommend any book by Gail Carragher, who is one of my absolute favourite authors, which I'm sure you've no doubt seen if you've watched at least a few of my videos. All of her books are set in the same world of high Victorian society with a supernatural twist. And that in itself comes across from the moment you open these books. They're told in a flouncy high English Victorian style. 
and with so much humour embedded within them. Gail Carragher doesn't make fun of that style of speaking, but she manages to weave out all the amusing elements of it. This series in particular is about Sophronia, who goes to finishing school, not knowing that it's a school where girls learn to finish everything, including curtsies and proper dinner etiquette, as well as murder and spy techniques. The writing style is exactly why this story works so well, just making the entire thing gel together, really getting across the personalities of all of the characters, as well as just being so indulgent of the absurdity of the world in which the characters reside is just the perfect mix of a classical style with modern humour. Another quite humorous recommendation I have is Magnus Chase and the Sword of Summer by Rick Riordan. I was going to talk about the Percy Jackson books because I think that that style is just fantastic, but I feel like everybody already knows that, so I thought it was very much worth mentioning Rick Riordan's Norse mythology series, which employs that very humorous, sassy, and just fun style that I loved in the original Percy Jackson books. Rather than focusing on the Greek gods, our main character here is the son of a Norse god, and we get to learn about the workings of Norse mythology, the legends that come with it and the heroes prevalent in that time. Like in Percy Jackson, we have a first-person style narrative with a protagonist able to poke fun at himself and at everything around him in a way that just makes everything so upbeat. They are middle grade books, which just allows this childish glee to come through all of the storytelling, but is genuinely perfect for any age, because you still get all the tension and the danger, but just with this incredibly light presentation that genuinely captures all the best parts of middle grade fantasy. I also have a couple of contemporary recommendations, and the first of those is Stolen by Lucy Christopher. This is a young adult contemporary, and this honestly has remained one of my top favourite books for about 10 years. We follow a girl named Gemma who, while is travelling with her parents and is at an airport in China, is kidnapped and taken to a desert in Australia. The story follows Gemma and her captor and is in fact written in the form of a letter to him recounting the experiences from her eyes. That style is what made this book so incredibly intoxicating. Like in all honesty, I sat down and read this book in about three hours and then immediately reread it again because I just could not stop thinking about it. Because it's written as a letter, we have a first person review, but also a second person narrative that constantly speaks to her captor. That then had the effect of really putting me into Gemma's shoes. We're seeing the desert and seeing the world around her, as well as really feeling the fear, was a constant. It created such a strong sense of connection to the entire story. And it is just a book that has stuck with me for a really, really long time. My other contemporary recommendation is The Trick Is To Keep Breathing by Janice Galloway. This is an adult contemporary following a drama teacher who struggles very deeply with her mental health and we essentially watch her mental deterioration. This book is written as a diary and as a result has annotations and also very different ways of playing about with the format. Playing about with the way that the sentences flow together, that line counts come across. Generating something that's as disorienting as it is compelling. It's a story that made me feel so many things and I do think it's because the writing style itself and just the way that we receive the narrative had a unique quality that encompassed those feelings in a way I hadn't seen before. I'm also going to talk about the Endgame trilogy by James Frey. This is perhaps not one of my favourite, favourite series but something that when I think about the actual writing and the way that it creates the setup of the world just has an absolutely fantastic feel to it. In Endgame, essentially the end of the world is about to occur and there are 12 lines of families that have prepared for the end of the world. 
each choosing their player to participate in the end game, find the keys and essentially allow them to save their chunk of humanity. We follow the 12 different players as end game begins and they have to begin their search all across the world. This is a very fast paced and very violent at times story. And what it does so well is tell us about all 12 of the participants with this really cold, omniscient detachment. There is a sense of inevitability to everything that happens that created so much tension as I was reading it. It worked really well because of the higher beings behind Endgame. And by not actually creating separate voices for the characters, that sense of detachment was created. I think it gives these higher beings a constant presence that again, adds to that inevitability as well as that tension that I think is at the very core of this story and is what makes it work so, so fantastically well. And the very last book I'm going to talk about is the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown. This is another one I find so interesting because of a sort of more detached way of speaking. But what's so intriguing about it is that it's juxtaposed with wonderful metaphor and very powerful language while being told in the first person. We follow Daryl, who is a red at the very bottom of society, who discovers that while his family has been working for years to make Mars hospitable by slaving away underground, Mars has actually been habitable that entire time. And he and everyone he knows have unknowingly worked as slaves. He finds a way to infiltrate the gold society, those at the very top of the social scale. What the writing style aspect, which I mentioned before with that detachment, as well as that real compelling desire that's revealed through the way that Daryl speaks and describes the world around him, works really well as his world expands from the underground caves he knows to Mars as a whole and eventually we get to see the entire cosmos. It's another one that balances tension incredibly well as well as all the political maneuverings that go on within it and most importantly create a character that is so dynamic and who we can sympathise with but at the same time whose ability to be cold and ruthless also comes across. Considering the fact we do spend the entire trilogy within Daryl's head, the way his story is told is incredibly important but works super well. That's it from me today and for the books with writing styles that I would recommend. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye!